All right, everybody, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Ford on the Nikki Dog Answers. I recently got a question about you using albumin or bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate for resuscitation, I suppose. Uh, it wasn't really specified. So uh, let's talk about using albumin and sodium bicarbonate, or we'll just sort of focus on bicarbonate. So these are two very different solutions for resuscitation. Let's focus right now on albumin. Giving the trainees all those NICU secrets. Teaching the families. Bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. When you're using albumin, you're essentially using this for resuscitation of volume. So you're assuming that we have hypotension, meaning there's been low blood pressure for whatever reason. Let's just assume we have a patient that has shock. It could be because of sepsis, so we're gonna focus on you have either volume loss uh, because the volume is either seeping into the tissues uh, or you have volume loss because uh, there's been uh, some tissue tear and you're losing it either outside of the body or you're losing it into some, uh, let's just Im imagine abdominal cavity uh, or because there's been a lot of swelling, you're sort of losing it outside of the blood vessels into the tissues as I mentioned already. So either way, you're losing intravascular volume. So you have to go ahead and replete. You have to go ahead and give that volume back. So you can give that as normal saline. That's usually sort of the quickest thing to give it. Uh, in ACL, uh, it's essentially salt diluted in water. And why do we do that? The first thing to do, it's easy to get, it usually readily available, and you give that volume. The sodium is really what pulls the water, you give that. The problem with that is that it doesn't have something called oncotic pressure. What does that mean? As you give that sodium into the blood vessel, it would very quickly, it will very quickly seep in into the vascular, into the intravascular space, but then very quickly go anywhere it wants to. You see, when we're talking about blood vessels, we sometimes when we're talking about cardiovascular issues, we call them pipes, but they're really not pipes, they're actual cells. They're moving organisms. Well, not organisms because those are multicellular, but they're actually cells and they're stuck together. And like that, they have walls and they basically move and they have little spaces between the walls. And especially if you have a, a patient, if you have a, 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 an infant that is undergoing some type of disease and type of illness, there's a lot of inflammation. Well, the walls may be actually edematous, they're inflamed the tissues may be actually separating because of edema and there are spaces between that. So as you give volume, the fluid may be very quickly seeping out. We see this not only in infants, obviously we see this in all patients. So let's talk about what oncotic pressure is. Oncotic pressure is essentially the pressure that, uh, that holds things back into the blood vessel. So as you are releasing fluid, that oncotic pressure is able to hold that fluid back. And this is where albumin has a much better oncotic pressure. So what exactly is albumin? Albumin is essentially a large, a very large protein. You can think of it essentially like if it was cotton, a big ball of cotton. And why think of it as cotton? Well, because it, it is a kind of a big fluffy protein that really likes to hold on to water. Not only is it large so that it doesn't go out of the spaces. Remember I talked about the spaces that can sometimes with edema, there can be spaces in the walls in the blood vessels so that the, you know, if the, the other smaller molecules like sodium I talked about, the sodium can seep out and take water with it and water molecules and other smaller molecules can seep out like potassium and other little electrolytes. 
Well, albumin is a big, huge cotton protein. Again, it's not cotton, but it's like a big, huge molecule. And that one does not come out unless there's a huge space. Obviously, if there's trauma or the edema is so bad that the vessel is so big and open, then obviously some albumin can seep out and sometimes carry the, the water with you, uh, with it. So that can happen. But for the most part, albumin will actually stay within the intravascular space. And that's really good because as it's trying to come out, it will actually stay within the vessel. And so any water that may be seeping out through the little spaces around that albumin, that cotton molecule will actually try and suck up the water in the interstitial space back into the intravascular space. It's got really good oncotic pressure. It'll try and suck that fluid back into, in, into, into the intravascular space. So that's why it's actually a really good or a better molecule to give or a better, better solution to give when you're trying to resuscitate than sodium chloride. Sodium chloride easier to give much more easily readable to give if you're trying to resuscitate with hypotension you have it right there it's easy you go ahead and give it when you can albumin harder to get to but when you are trying to resuscitate a better uh, solution to resuscitate with is albumin now let's talk about the difference between that and now using sodium bicarbonate there's still that sodium and then again that sodium is is mostly a carrier if you will uh, but what you're doing with the bicarbonate now is that in case of a resuscitation, usually when, they're, when you're using it for resuscitation, it, usually the patient not only are we dealing with hypotension, but there's usually some acidosis with it. If a patient is sick enough that there's been hypotension, that means there's probably a perfusion issue as well, meaning the cells have not been getting, because of the hypotension, they haven't been getting all that good blood flow, which means they've accumulated some acid as well. If they're not getting good blood flow, means they're not getting good hemoglobin molecule within that, remember the red blood cells blood flow, means they're not getting red blood, red blood cells in that blood flow, and in that red blood cell is hemoglobin globin and what, do, what does hemoglobin carry they carry oxygen molecules and that's what the cell needs and if the cells are not getting oxygen that means they cannot go through that wonderful thing that we all try to forget that Krebs cycle and that cytochrome and the respiratory chain that eventually gives you all this ATP well if they cannot go through that Krebs cycle and respiratory chain it all backs up and they have to go through now the production of lactate which leads to lactic acidosis. And that's where you get this lactate go up and that's acid, right? So at first you kind of need that lactic acid. The, re the reason why the body creates it is because the brain can actually use that as a surrogate for energy. It needs to use some type of energy if it can't actually use it. But unfortunately, when it builds up too much, it now begins to ruin the enzymes. The enzymes cannot work in an acidic environment, but then it also begins to burn the cells, and then it also causes pulmonary hypertension. It, it really leads to a lot of problems when it accumulates too much. Little bit is okay, too much, no bueno. So when it leads to a lot of acid problems, you need to now buffer that. You need to add something to bring that down. You need some type of a neutralizing agent to bring the acid down. That's where you buffer that with sodium bicarbonate. The bicarbonate part will come in and bring the acid level down. That's not something that you'll be able to do with sodium chloride. That's not something that you'll be able to do with the other one we were talking about, which is the albumin. Those two can help wash out a little bit of the acid level. If you're able to give that sodium chloride, you're able to give that albumin, it may help wash out a little bit through the kidney, but it's not gonna really work as a buffer. That's where you have to give your sodium bicarbonate. One thing you have to be really careful though, is that as you're giving the bicarbonate, you're, it's a one-to-one -one solution of sodium, which means you're gonna be giving a lot of sodium to get that bicarbonate, okay? And you have to watch out for this because it will actually, because that it's a lot of sodium that you're carrying in to be able to give that bicarbonate, two effects can, will happen. 
One, that sodium image you're given is gonna pull in a lot of fluid, which is good if you're having hypotension, but it also goes and pulls in fluid into the brain tissue, which can lead to cerebral edema edema swelling into the brain. So you have to watch out, especially as we're talking about NICU babies with those preemie babies. You don't wanna be giving a lot of sodium bicarbonate because it has been shown to increase the risk of endocranial hemorrhage, intraventricular hemorrhage because of bleeding, uh, of the, uh, the changes in pressures that it causes because of cerebral edema. So you have to be very careful. You wanna give low doses um, in milliequivalents of that sodium bicarb. You really wanna avoid sodium bicarb if you can, but if you have to give it because of the acidity level, you give it in low doses. 0.5, one milliequivalents at a time if you have to, okay? So, but you have to do it, you can go ahead and do that sodium bicarb uh, to give it at very low doses, okay? Second thing is that bicarbonate, you have to watch out because, uh, because of the shifts that happen in the buffering system and the henderson hasselbach equation, you're gonna be shifting that that sodium bicarbonate will become carbonic acid and it's gonna be shifting into CO2 and water, which means you have to have a good way of blowing off that CO2 that will be created. So bicarbonate will join with another, uh, at, with another hydrogen ion and eventually you're gonna to have to blow off because it's gonna become CO2 and water. Water won't be that big of a problem. That CO2, if a baby's already having problems with CO2 elevations because it's very sick, you're gonna make sure that that baby has a secure airway and is gonna be able to blow off that extra CO2. So watch out for that. If that baby does not have a secure airway or you're already dealing with CO2, you gotta know if your CO2 is already elevated, if you're having CO2 problems, as you're giving bicarb because you're dealing with the lactic acidosis, you better be very aware that your next gases, your CO2s are gonna be climbing up. So you gotta be really aware that if you're already having trouble on already high settings on mechanical ventilation, you might be already thinking, I need to go on an oscillator and be prepared because that CO2 is gonna climb as I give that bicarb. Or lots of things you gotta be thinking. It's not just about acting and giving fluids and fluids and fluids. You gotta be thinking ahead, what are my fluids gonna be doing as I give these things, okay? Hopefully that answers your question. Really love answering these questions, so please go ahead and hit like. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe. You know you can find me also on Instagram. I'm always you know, very active on that. I've just gotten on TikTok and I'm doing questions on TikTok too called The NICU Life. There's a series I'm doing on, on that as well. Uh, so please go ahead and you know, like, subscribe, uh, join those other two uh, social media. If you haven't uh, uh, followed me on those, please go ahead and do so. And really important too, go ahead and in the comment section, ask me a question. That's what I'm here for, you know? So please ask me a question uh, on the comment section. And that's what I'm here for, the Nikki Doc answers. And next uh, question could be your question. All right, see you with the next one. Thank you.